ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today I'm doing my top four CPUs, mainstream CPUs, right now. So a lot of people did top three, other people did top five, and I thought, hey, let's do a top four. And let's jump right into it with the best budget CPU right now. And this one was pretty easy because Intel's not very good at the budget CPU market uh, as of right now. That'll probably change in the future, but I have to give it to the Ryzen 3 2200G. It's coming in right now on pricebuy.co.nz at about 160 New Zealand dollars, and for that you get a really good budget CPU. Maybe you're just trying to get into PC gaming, you don't have a lot of money, it's going to be a good choice. Uh, or maybe you already have a pretty good you know, personal rig, you're just looking to build a second PC for media use or something like that, it'll also be very good. Uh, people will say, well, why wouldn't you go for the 2400? And for that, I would say, go back and watch my showdown I did comparing the two of them, and you'll see, because both of them come with the same cooler, that the 2200G wants you overclock that GPU speed up a bit, the performance difference between the two really isn't that big. Uh, not only that, but you know, people say we well, could do that with a 2400. Well, you kind of can't because it runs so much hotter. You have much less overclocking headroom with the 2400 than you do with the 2200. So overall, I would say the 2200G is just the better choice here, and it is the best budget CPU you can buy right now. But let's go over and talk about the best value for money CPU overall. And this is the most difficult choice, for sure. It's very, very hard. So you basically have three choices, and all of them are really solid. You have the Intel i5-8400 here, very, very good CPU. You have the Ryzen 5 2600, also a very good CPU. And the Ryzen 5 2600X. So you may be asking, well, why have you included the two Ryzen 5s? when they're more or less the same thing. Well, there are some differences between the two that need to be stated. Uh, the fact that the 2600X here has much better stock clock speeds, which will really help when it comes to gaming. It also comes with a much better stock cooler in the Wraith Spire, and overall, I would say, to me personally, the 2600X is the better value out of the two, mainly for those reasons. Also, you have to take into consideration a lot of people don't want to overclock or don't know how, or just don't want to bother learning, which is fine, and in which case I would definitely go for the 2600X. But then when you think, you know, uh, 8400 versus 2600X, which one would you go out of those two? Well, Price-wise, the 8400 will set you back about 280 New Zealand dollars on price buy. The 2600X will set you back about 350 New Zealand dollars on price buy. So there's a bit of a difference there. Uh, not only that, but motherboards-wise, they're about the same. The B360s and B350s are in New Zealand right now around the same price. Maybe the B350s are a tiny bit cheaper. Uh, but memory-wise, you can run slower speed memory with the 8400, and it doesn't really impact performance much, where it has a larger impact on the 2600X. But either way, you're going to get a really good CPU. So I'd put it this way. If you're buying for right now, you're mainly gaming, and you're not planning on upgrading in like the next three years, then I would go for the i5-8400. This is a very good CPU for gaming. However, if you're a person that maybe does a bit more productivity stuff and you are planning on upgrading within the next three years, I would go for the 2600X because, because it has a much better upgrade path and also it does much better in the productivity testing. So that's how I would put it there. But either way, you're going to get a very, very good uh, value for money CPU. So now let's talk about the best gaming CPU, just straight up. the best mainstream gaming CPU that you can buy right now and money is not a factor and for that it's very easy the Intel i7 8700k it's a very very good uh, gaming CPU even at stock speeds it's solid but once you overclock it I mean a 6 core 12 thread CPU at 5 gigahertz I mean that just doesn't muck around 
It isn't cheap though. It's gonna see you back about 550 New Zealand dollars. It also doesn't come with a cooler and you're gonna need to put a pretty decent one on it because it's pretty hot, especially once you overclock it. Uh, so you're gonna need at minimum a 120 millimeter air cooler. Ideally, you'd want to go to some sort of liquid cooler. But as far as gaming performance goes, nothing can beat an overclocked 8700K and pretty much nothing can beat it at stock speeds as well or they only get sort of a little close to it. Uh, uh, only beat it by a little bit, I mean. So yeah, the 8700K is definitely the best gaming CPU right now. So if you just have money to burn and you don't care about value for money and you just want the very, very best gaming CPU, go for the 8700K. And then the last sort of cat category I wanted to talk about is the best mainstream productivity CPU. Because there's plenty of people out there that maybe don't want to jump up to the enthusiast platform for a workstation PC, maybe they're not looking to spend that much money, or maybe they do a combination of things, like I do, a combination of gaming and productivity with their PC, and they don't really want, feel the need to like jump up to the enthusiast platform. So for this, there's also basically two really good choices. You have the Ryzen 7 2700X, which right now comes in at about 510 New Zealand dollars on Price Buy. Price Buy also has a feature called Price Alert, which lets you know uh, if they ever go on special. So obviously, you know, things go on special just for one day, you can get in there and get it much cheaper. So that's a good thing. Uh, the 2700X also comes with a very good cooler, the Wraith Prism. Uh, so that's really solid. Whereas the 8700K, which I would say is the other option there, doesn't obviously come with the cooler. So it's going to depend on what sort of application you're using. But I would say that uh, value-wise, I would go for the 2700X when it came to a sort of productivity gaming uh, system because it's going to be much cheaper. You know, maybe uh, overall be like $140 cheaper when you think the $40 extra for the CPU itself and then maybe a $100 cooler to cool the 8700K. It also does better in some of the tests, although an overclocked 8700K will sometimes beat a 2700X and things like rendering tests and stuff like that. Either way, they're both going to be really, really solid. So I would just, you know, see how much money you're wanting to spend. If you don't mind spending a bit more and you'd rather have the you know, better gaming performance as well, then you'd head towards more the 8700K, which is what I run in my system. But if you wanted to save a bit of money, maybe put, in, put it into getting a slightly better uh, GPU or something like that, then you would go for the 2700X. But either way, both of them are gonna be very good for gaming and also very good for productivity stuff. So solid choice either way. So that's my list. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below. Don't just say which one you would pick instead, but tell me you know, why you would, or if you agree with my choices, and maybe you have a different reason why you agree with them, let me know. I want this to be a conversation. Uh, all of these are ones that I've taken from my own testing, you know, things I've really thought about, and the ones that I think are the best overall. But I really like to know what you guys think, so let me know in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to Tech Showdown because it shows that you're supporting the channel, shows that you're interested, and gives me a lot of motivation to keep on making these videos for you guys. And as always, I'll see you next time.